Wild.tv. Even if you're not able to be at our stable in the saddle on Sunday, we're going to air this on Sunday. Mike, we want to make sure that it's streaming live. I'm sorry, Saturday morning from 8 to 12. I want to stream this so people, if you want to watch and catch hold of a firm foundation course, we're going to talk about salvation. We're going to talk about vision. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about uh, spiritual warfare. We're going to talk about purpose, how the church started, all those things. So if you've not signed up for that, get signed up in the back. Because we got to find out how many, because we're going to feed you lunch afterward. So I'm excited about all the new folk here. Would you welcome Bishop Gary McIntosh to the platform? Right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to get right into it. We got. I have plenty to go over tonight, and they told me that they had a bologna sandwich back there for Pastor Jerry, and I need to finish on time. So uh, we'll try to get that done. I, uh, I'm going to do about a, a five-minute uh, recap, so I'm going to go real quick. But um, this, this whole teaching came out of a, my own personal process uh, after 45 years of pastoring. Uh, Four years ago, I turned my church over, and I went through a whole different process than I anticipated. And I began to realize a lot of things in my life that, that are essential part of a Christian's life, but became a part of my life because I was a pastor. And I had to learn a whole different dimension of the things that we've been talking about personally, because like... I understood the power of the word, and I studied the word day and night because I preached three times a week. And so I was always, always in the word studying. But now I'm in the word just to find God. You know, I always prayed. I prayed a lot because we had a lot of services and praying for the people and praying for upcoming events and so on. Now I'm praying just to communicate with God. You understand? I, I had to find a different process than what was demanded of me as, as a pastor. I had to find just as a child of God. And uh, it's been a great uh, four years of my life. And so I put this together out of working with people for 45 years and watching them come in and go out, get high and go low and right, right. Uh, be happy and be sad, be glad and be mad and all the rest, and they were all over the place all the time. Now, I know in life we have ups and downs. We have things we go through. There are some crises that we, we find every now and then. We go through some trouble every now and then. I understand that, but, but we can't be all over the place all the time. And so I said, God, you got to give me some clear things for the body of Christ to help them to walk this thing out on a daily basis. And, uh, and many of the things that I've, I'm bringing you and I'll bring tonight are things that I have learned uh, in my relationship with God, but certainly in the last four years in, in a whole different dimension than I ever experienced before. Is that all right? All right. So uh, we took our, our text from Second Peter, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, chapter 1, verse 3 through 10. And he gives a list of things, but he starts out by saying his that we are partakers of his divine nature. And that as we partake of his divine nature, he's given us everything we need for life and godliness. Everything we need for life and godliness. Do you notice he didn't use one word but two? Which means there are two distinct things that he's given his uh, ability for us to uh, take, partake of his divine nature. And that is for life. You got to live life, right? And you got to walk with God and become more like him every day, right? Godliness, that's, that's what that means. And so, so his divine power is practical for our daily living and practical for our relationship in him. And he said, then if you add to your faith good character, spiritual understanding, discipline, patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness, generous love and uh, all these things he said if you possess these qualities in increasing measure they'll keep you from being ineffective and and unproductive in your knowledge of him nobody wants to live life and be ineffective and unproductive and so god's god's is helping us to learn how to be effective 
and productive, but we have to learn the process. We have to learn the process. And there are several things that go along with the process. We started by saying there are two questions we want to answer this week. Number one, where am I in the process? And number two, where do I need to move forward in the process? One's identification, the other is clarification. And so we need both of those to understand where we are in God. And then we talked about the survey, and we'll just put that chart up, and we'll start there, and I'll I'll walk through that real quick. We talked about the survey. They found four distinct groups of people. One, one area were those that were exploring God. They were searching. They were searching, and they needed fellowship. The others were beginning in God. They were inquiring, and they needed relationship. Remember, if you don't have relationship, you're going to lose people. If they don't know three people in the first three months, they're out of your church. They'll come, be happy, and say, I love this church, and they'll be gone. That's people. They need relationship. Then close to God. Those are learning, and that is discipleship. That's the process of continuing to learn. We are always learning. I told you uh, on Sunday, the more I learn, the more I realize how little I know. I've been studying the Word of God for 45 years, and I'll read something and say, I never saw that before. And it'll take me into a whole new arena of learning. And so so we're constantly learning, and then God-centered, God-centered. And those are, the, the, those are leaders, and they need leadership in their life, okay? And the gaps between those are how we navigate one to the other. The first, we navigate from exploring God and beginning of God through the cross of salvation. We must be grateful for the cross every day of our lives. You cannot lose sight of what Jesus did for you when he paid the price, not only for your sins, but your sicknesses, your hurts, your pains, your discouragements on Calvary. Amen? Amen. He took it all upon himself. And then we navigate from beginning in God to close to God through the Word of God. The Word of God is, is our greatest friend. This Bible wasn't written just for scholars. And, and God didn't write it, by the way, in King James English. That was King James, the 17th century Eng- English. That, that was the, how they translated in that time. He ordered that to be done, and, and he wasn't even a godly man. But King James English isn't the, isn't the anointed version. It's, it's, the, it's the Word of God. It's the Word of God, and there are many different translations. I study mostly from the NIV. That's the New Intelligent Version. <laughs> and then we go from close to God to God-centered by the Holy Spirit. It's the cross of salvation brings us to understanding of grace. You're saved through, uh, by grace through faith. You can bring the next one up, Lori. And then the Word of God is, brings deliverance to our lives. That doesn't mean everybody's filled with devils and demons. I'm not into all that stuff. There is a devil. He doesn't like you. He's against you. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. We understand that. But there's sometimes there's areas of our life that are strongholds that need to be broken. And the Word of God brings you to the process of deliverance. I've seen people delivered just in a moment through the power of God in prayer. But most of the time when people walk in something long enough, they need to walk out of it. And so we used to have weekends we called encounters and we, we took over 10,000 people from all over the country to, through these encounters in, in a matter of four years. It was amazing. And we saw massive deliverance, but we found that people had to come out of that and get in the Word to walk out their deliverance. Make sense? So the Word of God. And then the Holy Spirit brings us into covenant relationship because we serve a covenant God. And that's a whole... Uh, week of teaching in itself, but God's a covenant God. Everything he does, he does out of covenant. When he became your Lord and Savior, it's a covenant relationship. God doesn't quit on you because you do something wrong. God doesn't look for a moment to try to send you to a burning hell. He loves you, amen. He paid the price to free you and and to give you a, a heavenly kingdom. And so so we understand that. So it's a covenant God. It's also you and enter at that point into leadership we call servant leaders. I took off leadership out of our, our church and I made everybody servant leaders. Because if you don't understand servanthood, you can't be a leader. You don't lead so people can serve you. 
you serve people. And all a title does is describe how you serve people. That's all. If people call me bishop, it's not because it's a great title. It's because I'm responsible for pastors. And it's not always easy. And there are many times I'd rather you call me brother or friend. Uh, because it's a huge responsibility. And so it just describes how I serve. So I get to serve pastors. And, and it's the joy of my life. And that's what I'm doing full time now. So this is the basic process. The top of your chart, the top of your chart then, and by the way, we talked about Nicodemus being exploring to God, the woman at the well beginning in God, Peter being close to God, and John, the beloved disciple, being God-centered just as examples of their process. Of course, they were all moving through the process, and so must we. And as Pastor Jerry said so well the other night, that there's sometimes that that you have to go back and begin in God again. It doesn't mean you start all over. It just means a whole new area is opened and you, you, you've been searching some things. You start exploring to move forward with that. And so our goal was for you to find yourself, not to stand up with everybody and declare, I'm exploring God, I'm beginning in God, but to find yourself and to be true to yourself. This is where I'm at. Why? So once you find yourself, you can begin to move in the process because all of us are called to move in the process. Growth is not something that you have to pray for. Growth comes out of health. When you're healthy, you grow. When a tree is healthy, it grows. You don't have to go out and say, tree, I just command you in Jesus' name, grow. That doesn't make a tree grow. It's healthy roots make it grow. And as long as there's rain that comes, which you all have had plenty, probably too much, um, <laughs> The, the roots get the moisture and the tree grows and it produces as a result. That's what God wants in our life, the natural process of life. As you grow, you begin to be used of God in a whole different dimension. And God just wants us to stay healthy, right? Stay healthy. One time uh, I had a tree that was that the, the, some of the huge limbs were, were dying and I said, what's the problem? And so finally I brought a a tree person out and they said well it's probably because the roots are bad the roots are bad it takes a while but it shows up in in its productivity it's not being effective or productive because its roots are bad you got to be healthy amen come on say it's time to be healthy so we talked about that we talked about all that so tonight I want to go to the top of the chart and then tomorrow uh, if you can't make it to New Caney, I don't know, they, can they get it online? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Amen. <laughs> if you're not, Pastor Jerry will get you the information, or Lori, they'll get you the information. Be there. I want to, yeah, be there. That's right. Just, just make an effort to be there so you can fill in the whole bottom. Because the whole bottom is just the Word of God, the Word of God. And you're going to see how the Word of God flows in this process. I mean, in an amazing way like you've never seen before. Tonight, I want to deal with the umbrella, all right? That's that top. I want to deal with the umbrella. The umbrella is the covering. The greatest example of that is actually the, the children of Israel, Exodus chapter 13. It says, The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of, of the cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. In other words, God was leading the people out of things that were binding them into the promised land. If you take Egypt, some people, they left Egypt, but they didn't take Egypt's thinking out. So he's, he put them in this gap to make sure that the process could get rid of Egypt thinking because they were about to enter the promise. Because you can't take wrong thinking into the promised land of God. Wrong thinking will always isolate you, discourage you, and confuse you. And we were taught for years, some of us in, in our families, dysfunctional families, wrong thinking. So God's got to get that out of us. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. So, so we have to... We have to Trans be transformed by the what? Renewing of our mind, our way of thinking. We have to renew it. How? Through the Word of God and through the help of the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk about this covering or the umbrella over these things. And what a covering is, is a protection. 
It's a protection. Not only did, did the cloud lead them uh, during the day and the fire, the pillar of fire at night, but it provided for protection. Because if you've not been to Israel, it's hot during the day and it's cold at night. And so God provided them a cloud to, to keep back the heat and fire to provide heat. God's just a good God. Amen. Amen. So not only did he uh, provide a source of leading, but he provided a source of protection over their life. Cloud by day and fire by night. And so an umbrella is, is a thing that protects something. And there are two things that I found that are essential uh, for protecting the process in our life. And this process, as we walk through it, you have the chart before you, but as we walk through it, has to be covered. And what covers it is what I call two major sources of relationship, or the Bible even at times calls it intimacy. We get confused in our thinking when we, when, we, when we put the word intimacy just to a physical aspect between two humans. But this is, this is the, the closeness of relationship that we have with God. If you don't have that, the process gets weighty or confusing, and you tend to want to quit at some point or another. And by the way, as our, as our video uh, told us on Sunday morning... You just can't stop in God. There's no such thing as saying, God, I'm going to take a break. It's been good. I'm in a good place. I just need to take a break. You know I'll be back later. That doesn't happen. Either you're moving forward with God or you're moving away from God. One or the other. There's no, there's no still point of, uh, I'm just going to stay here for a while. And, and so it becomes important for us to know that. But it also becomes important to know that you're not going to grow 10 years in the next 10 days. You're going to grow one day at a time. And so you just got to stay in the process. You got to stay uh, reading your words. You have to stay thanking God every morning for, for the, the price that he paid for, for our lives. That we're so grateful for salvation. That, that you have to learn how to be grateful. My, my mother used to always say that. She said, you need to learn to be grateful. And I kept thinking, what is she talking about? And while she was saying that and I was arguing in my mind, I wasn't being grateful. I wanted something and I wanted it now. And she said, you need to be grateful for what you have. And, and how many know when your kids are grateful for what they have, you want to do more for them? That's the way God is. And so when you wake up every morning and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning, Lord. Not good Lord morning. You know. Some of you say that till you get your first cup of coffee. And that's good morning, Lord. You know, you wake up. But, but we, have to, we have to learn that. So there are two elements. You can write these down. I don't know how far we're going to get tonight. If not, I'll pick up tomorrow. But, but prayer and worship are two major, major, major points in our lives that are absolutely essential. And we have had people that have confused us on both of them. And so I want to I want to kind of make it clear and 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 kind of carve out a path for you so that you can enjoy uh, the dimension of both of them that's necessary to maintain a healthy relationship with God because they cover the process. Come on say they cover the process. And so I, I'm going to, I'll wait till the end, Lori, to give those points. But, but you can put both those points up there, prayer and, and, and worship. But I, I, again, I have had to learn not, new dimensions of both of these in my life. And, and I wish I would have known 45 years ago what I know today concerning both of these areas. But prayer is a whole different thing in my life today than it's ever been. I prayed all the time because I was in ministry all the time, doing something, helping people and dealing with situations and going to hospitals. And so that was my prayer life. That was my prayer life. Prayer is not just praying for things and people, though it certainly involves that. But the prayer that's essential to guide our lives is the relationship with God. And so I want to I read a couple of scriptures that that will help you. First of all, Proverbs 19, 21 said, Many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that will prevail. 
You can interpret that by saying God's more concerned about his purpose than he is our plan, unless our plan lines up with his purpose. Then we're in agreement. There's power in agreement, right? And so it becomes important because a lot of times I had a plan. I always ask God to bless my plan. And if God never responds, and that's sometimes how he answers my prayer, is when he doesn't respond. In other words, you didn't pray according to my will. He just is silent. Heaven is silent. I, I said, okay, I need to rethink this through. And so I've, I've learned some of this. But I'm telling you that when you find the purpose of God, things begin to happen in your life and through your life at a whole different level. So I want to just talk about the purpose of prayer because a lot of times prayer is the weakest meeting in most every church. We call a prayer meeting. If you get five, ten people, boy, you're great. That's exciting, you know. Why is that? Number one, people don't understand prayer. And number two, if they don't think God's going to answer prayer because they pray and it doesn't happen, they're not going to come. They're not going to come. But when you understand prayer... And how it works, everything begins to shift and change. And so I want to discuss some of those in a, in a very succinct way because we don't have a lot of time. But I, I, want, I want to talk to you about pray because the Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 5, when you pray. Do you notice it doesn't say if you pray? It's taken for granted that you love me, so we, you're going to pray. So when you pray, the Bible says. And then it also says in 1 Thessalonians 5, we talked about uh, on Sunday, but pray without ceasing, which doesn't mean don't ever talk, don't ever eat, don't ever work, don't do anything, just pray all day, every day. That's not what it means. It means you have to stay in an attitude of staying connected with God through the Holy Spirit day in and day out, all day long. So at any moment, God can use you to pray. You might be driving a car, and the Lord said, pray for so-and-so. And you just begin to pray. Don't close your eyes, but just begin to pray. Because you just stay in an attitude of prayer. And, 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 and remember, God's not interested that you pray in King James English. He's interested that, you, that you're honest and real and forthright. Amen? So whatever language, you, you're not going to offend God. Hey, man, I need some help. Thou, O Lord, knowest great heavenly God, Jehovah, that you don't need all that. God doesn't say, oh, man, listen to him pray. In fact, he told the Pharisees, he said, you're saying good things, but your heart's far from me. Don't be like the Pharisees. I used to go to prayer meetings, and I used to hear some of the saints preach, pray. You know what that means? They wanted to preach. So they'd get the microphone and they'd preach and not pray. And people get all excited and everything. And I'm thinking, I, I thought we were going to pray. I, I don't remember you supposed to give a message. You're supposed to pray. Take us to the throne of God. And let's see what God's saying and doing. So it becomes important. So I'll turn to Luke chapter 11. And while you're turning there. Have you ever thought about, because I, you know, I, we read the one-year Bible for about eight or ten years in a row, but I, I always thought about, you know, Jesus and the healing of the blind man and the raising of the dead in the funeral possession and walking on water and speaking to the storm and cleansing the leopard and speaking to the tree and watching it die and feeding the 5,000. I'm thinking, wow, if I ever had a chance to ask God for something, I'd ask him to teach me how to do the miracles. In fact, he'd just have to teach me how to do one, walk on water. Well, I, you start a ministry overnight walking on water, right? <laughs> Catch this on film, brothers. We're going to put it on Facebook, amen? And you walk on water, you're going to have 5,000 people there the next day. Luke chapter 11 says this, verse 1. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he'd finished, one of his disciples asked, Lord, teach us to pray. Well, man, disciple, you have an opportunity. Teach me how to do miracles. Teach me how to preach to the multitudes. He said, teach us to pray. The one thing that's recorded in the scriptures, the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray. Why was that? Why was that the one thing they asked? Teach us 
and 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 of course we we then we we teach the Lord's prayer, but that was just an example. That wasn't the model, so to speak. And so when he says teach us to pray, it was interesting because something was happening. Jesus most of the time when he was praying separated himself from the disciples. In fact, we see that in Mark uh, chapter one verse thirty-five. It says, and in the morning. Rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Oftentimes, Jesus separated himself to pray. He prayed communion with the Father, right? Relationship with the Father. And so, in this particular scripture, this was a few hours before uh, the sun came up. And so, the sun came up around 6 a.m. or so, so it had to be around 4 a.m., He went to pray. He went to pray. And the Bible says often that the disciples asked him to teach them to pray because they watched him pray. I mean, about the time he was finishing, they were getting up, but they'd go out, and there he would be praying. And and they might not have heard all the words that he prayed or all the conversation he had with the Father, but after that, the Bible said they would go into town. It's interesting you can, you can trace this throughout the scripture, and we won't take all the time tonight, but, but you see throughout the scripture that oftentimes out of those solitary places, they would go into town, and guess what happened? Miracles happened. So much so that the disciples saw him praying in a solitary place, so much that they, they would go into town and they'd see miracles on the way and miracles when they got there, and everybody he came in contact with, there was a miracle, and they said, Teach us to pray because we want to live the kind of life we see you living. Teach us to pray. And it was interesting, Jesus in Luke chapter 8, they they brought a blind man and he and Jesus said, He said, I want to I want to receive my sight. And here's here is his prayer. See. He walked up to the lever and said, Man, I want to be cleansed. He said, be clean. In Luke chapter 4, he went to Capernaum in the town of Galilee. And while he was teaching, a demon-possessed man came out and cried. As he said, away, get away, go away, go away. He said, be quiet, come out of him. Oh, that's not deep. It wasn't even profound. He didn't need to pray a long prayer. He had just been praying. So much so... That, that a woman was walking by in possession with a dead son. And he said, young man, get up. Wow. That's all he said? God, teach us to pray. Jesus, teach us to pray. We want to live that kind of life. His disciples were watching. He took a few seconds to do these miracles after a a certain amount of time praying. We take a few seconds to pray and work hours with people. Something wrong with that picture. He took time with the Father and took a few seconds with people to solve problems. When you have situations in your life, when you've started your day right in relationship with God, You can solve things quicker in life than you ever dreamed possible because you're ready because you're full and overflowing. Time and prayer is not wasted, but it's time invested. And what I saw growing up in the church and going to prayer meetings and we had uh, all night shut ins and which everybody, and it was interesting, brought pillows and blankets and I'm thinking, we come to a prayer meeting, you come to sleep. But, uh, but we go in those shut-ins, we pray. Some people pray most of the night or they'd wake up and pray and then go back to sleep and so on. But we pray and all that. And there was nothing wrong with that. But somehow there was something missing. And it was the intimacy of relationship with God. Are you with me? One day he was... Uh, in Matthew chapter 9, there was a demon-possessed boy, and, uh, and the disciples were trying to get the boy healed and, or get him delivered, and, and they couldn't. And so they went to Jesus and said, man, can you help us? 
And Jesus was watching this the whole time. That had to be an interesting thing. He was watching disciples laboring to get this boy free from, from demons. And, and, and he said, how long must I be with you? That was his answer. If they asked him to come, he came. He said, how long do I have to be with you? Have you not observed what I do to do what I'm about to do? And he said, so he said to the boy, bring the boy. And he said, get out. Just a word. Just a word because it came out of relationship. When you develop a relationship with God in prayer, something begins to happen. This comes out, he said, not but by prayer and fasting. In other words, the relationship happened outside this moment. The moment happens because of that relationship. You got it? I want to give you a scripture. I don't know if you've ever read this, but I want to give you a scripture. John chapter 5, write it down, verse 19. Jesus came then, gave this, came and gave this answer. Truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees the Father doing. Because what the Father does, the Son also does. I read that for years in my daily readings and never stopped to understand it. Jesus said, I only do that which I see the Father doing. So guess what he was doing in prayer? He was connecting with his Father in heaven and seeing what he was doing. And so when he came out of prayer, it was easy. I saw the father healing a blind man. I saw him delivering a little boy. I saw him raising a little boy from the dead. I saw multitudes being fed. And so when the situation came, I only did that which I saw the father doing. If Jesus said that, how much more must we? And so what I began to see, unfortunately, just in the last several years is that prayer is more seeing than lecturing God. As if God doesn't know what we're facing or what we're going through. It, it does mean bring, you know, supplication and intercession. We understand all of that. But he doesn't need a lecture. He doesn't need the, the scripture to back it up. He just needs you to connect with him at a level so you can see him do what you need done. And when you see the Father doing it, you can walk it out so easily. Amen. Everything begins to shift. Everything begins to change. If it was okay for the Son, I guess it might be okay for us. I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees the Father doing. So when he went to the solitude place, guess what he was doing? He was seeing what the Father was doing that day. So when he said, come on, guys, let's go into town. And he curses a fig tree or he sees a lame man or a blind man. He already saw in the realm of the spirit what the father was doing. And he just did it. And he just had to speak a word. Prayer is more about intimacy than about lists, lectures, and quoting scriptures to God. It certainly is not preaching God a sermon. It's intimacy. It's intimacy. I've had to learn that. Can I, can I be real? Yeah. I've had to learn that. I, I, I'm a workaholic. You get me up in the morning, stay out of my way. I'll see you late at night. We'll talk. I, I, I get things done. I get, I, my wife gives me a list of things done, and she said, I'll see you later on, and I'm back in an hour. And she said, you didn't get all that stuff done. I said, I did. I can get stuff done. And so I lived that way. And God said, can you just take some time and relax? Just be in me and let me be in you. And you can watch and not talk so much. Can you just take some moments? And I had to train myself to stop 
I had to train myself to lock in to God. I had to, I had to learn how to, to relax enough that I could see by the Spirit what God would do. And, 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 and it wasn't deep and profound. It was pretty simple but pretty unbelievable when I started taking those moments in prayer. But I had to get there. And so everybody's different. And it doesn't matter how you get there, but you got to get there. Right? You can't get there by texting on your phone. Oh, so and so. I got to get there. You know, one time I went to a restaurant and there, were, there was a couple and four kids. And all six of them were on their phones the whole night. I was surprised they could finish their meal. Because they were all on their phones the whole night. The whole night. Now, I thank God. Phones are convenient. It's wonderful. Amen. It's a way to communicate. It's all, it's all good. But it doesn't help your prayer time. Right? right? And if, if I have people knocking at my door at the office, it's not a good place to pray at that particular time. Right? <laughs> so you got to find a solitude place. A place that's apart. Wherever that is. Or, or a or a, a, a sign on your door, not available, right? Whatever it is. You, you know, kids, I'll talk to you in 30 minutes. Whatever it is, you gotta find, you got to find that somehow, somewhere, in some way. And then you got to settle yourself. Because my mind races. I, if I wake up in the morning, uh, and the older you get, the more you need to wake up in the middle of the night... Some of y'all get that later. But I, I'm danger. I've had to train myself. Don't think, don't think, don't think. Do what I need to do and then get back to bed quick. Because if, if my mind clicks in, I'm done. Yes. Two in the morning, I'm done. I'm done. I can't get back to sleep. And, and so I have to get to a place that I can relax my mind and be open to what God's doing, not what I'm doing. I have to do that. And I've learned that, and it's changed my life. It's changed my life. You know what I need? So I'm, I'm just talking about me for a minute. Just work with me for a minute. I, I, I need music. But I don't need music with words. Because if I hear music with words, I'm singing the song. And then I'm thinking, what were they trying to say? And, boy, they could have said it this way. And, oh, wow, that's cool because they connect this with this. And so my mind's gone with the music. So I have to have music with no words that relaxes me, that doesn't hype me, because if I hype, then I'm thinking about something else, that relaxes me so I can just relax in God for a minute, for a minute. Because one moment in his presence can change your life forever. You just need one moment in his presence, one moment in his presence. And so the Internet is filled with great music. That's just instrumental music, just worship music. And so, so I've had to find some things that are not worship songs that are just music. Because I'm starting singing the words. And then, you there? I'm talking about me. It might not be you. But whatever it is for you to get there, you need to get there. Because this is a part of the covering of your life of intimacy that lets the process work. Prayer is not an option. It is not an option for any of us. I don't care who you are, what your title is or isn't. It's not an option. We all have to pray. When you pray, not if. When you pray. And, and I had to realize that, that if I could get some things in God, it could change my whole day. So it wasn't time wasted. Oh, now I only got 30 minutes. No, no, it's time invested. Because my whole day is going to shift because I began to see what God was doing. Does it make sense? So, so I have to find a place, and my, my place is early in the morning. My wife teaches school. She's online. She teaches online to Chinese students. She teaches English. She doesn't speak Chinese. It's all in English, but she teaches classes. And they're 17 hours ahead, so she starts at 3 o'clock in the morning. And so when she did it, I said, sweetheart, I'll get up with you, and I'll make you coffee, and... And I do it. 
Well, I get up at four now. She, but but I, 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 I made her coffee, and I take her computer upstairs and set it up and make sure it's all working right. And she teaches classes. But I go back downstairs around four o'clock, and I'm all by myself. And my phone isn't ringing. Nobody's texting me. Amen. The, the, there's nothing outside to distract me because it's dark outside. And I found it a, a, a place that could be my solitude place. Kids aren't running, screaming, dogs aren't barking, even my dog's sleeping, amen. It's, it's just, and my dog is busy. I mean, but my dog's even sleeping. So, so it's just this, this moment in time that's transforming my life. So I use music. So this is what I'm going to do tonight, because I, 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 and I don't know if we're going to get to worship. We're not going to get to worship. This is what I want to do tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to end with this. I'm going to take you to music that, that I would listen to, okay? So if you don't like it, don't worry about it. The Internet's available. You can, you can find something you like. I don't know. Ken Holloway may have some instrumental stuff, but I, I don't know. But find something you like, all right? But I need peaceful music that allows me to relax, to get in his presence. And so this is the kind of the music I I, I listen to in the mornings that that I start then beginning to see with clarity. Is it all right? So put your notebooks down, and we'll. I'm, I'm going to hit worship uh, quick tomorrow night, and then we're going to finish out the chart. But I, I I feel like this is where we need to end tonight. So uh, I I you don't need to take any more notes. I just want you to relax. And this is what I have to train myself is don't think about anybody or any particular situation. Now, for some of you, you're not going to be able to do that instantly. For some of you, you're going to have to train yourself. I understand. I do understand that. But I'm just telling you, when you get to that place, if you can see what the Father's doing, amazing things will begin to happen. So this afternoon, I was preparing for the meeting tonight. I, was, I started to pray and then all of a sudden I said, no, I just need to put on some worship music. And, and this is the, one of the things I found because uh, I didn't have my playlist, but this is what I found. So this is what I used even this afternoon just to sit, listen to see if I could see what God might be doing. Amen. So, so if you need to close your eyes, don't look around. Maybe just l- can you lower the lights a little bit? I don't want it dark, dark, but just. Can you lower the lights a little bit? Can you do that? I don't know if you can. All right. 